Can the Bamboo Labs AMS be configured so that when it does a multicolor 3D print, all of its purge waste is redirected into another 3D printed object so that instead of being wasted, it can be useful? Well, as I explored this problem, the answer had me quoting Toy Story 2 because it was yes, no, maybe, but not right now. But I want to talk to you once again about Exter. You might not know this about me, but I hate carrying around a keychain with a bunch of dangling keys on it. In my opinion, that's just a bunch of loose knives that are trying to cut a hole in your pocket. And so for a long time, I've carried around a little key wallet like this that has places for all of your various keys. However, you know, I've never found one of these that last for very long before completely falling apart. However, Exter has created an excellent solution for keeping all of your keys in one place and in one solid block where they won't cut up my pocket anymore. This is the sort of project that I have 3D printed and made do-it-yourself solutions for in the past. And while those were functional and held together with zip ties, I ended up going back to my key wallet after a little while but I don't think I'm going back from my extra key organizer. It's made out of stainless steel, and so it's solid and well-constructed. I also kind of dig how they make this little magnetic top on it, so while you're putting it together, that makes it easy to assemble, but it also makes it easy to keep it on your keychain and also allows you to remove it should you ever need to for anything. This is a fantastic solution and beats the pants off of any do-it-yourself solution that I've made myself in the past. I hope that you'll check it out. The link is in the description. And if you use the code 3D on checkout, you'll get 25% off during their anniversary sale. All right, back to the video. Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor. And if you're new to 3D printing or just looking for something new to do with 3D printing, well, I hope you'll stick around. On this channel, we're always trying to push the boundaries and I've got a great community on Discord who are always there to help answer your questions and explore new ways of making with awesome technology. The Bamboo Labs AMS system is the most effective multi-color 3D printing system that I've ever used. Sorry, I hedged a little bit there, but that's only because technically this is a multi-material 3D printing system, but if you load it up with different materials, you could, if you're not very careful, wind up having problems. But I don't want to start off with a negative because honestly, I've used a lot of different systems like the AMS that try to enable you to do 3D printing with multiple colors coming into one nozzle and every single one of them has been troublesome and in the end I was unable to actually get any good prints from them. But with the Bamboo Labs AMS all I had to do was hook it up and almost immediately I was making multicolor 3D prints that I was excited by and excited to share with people. And while my experience with the AMS system has been amazing and inspirational, I have to admit it hasn't been perfect. Of course, one of the biggest flaws in this system is that you have to have specifically sized spools. Now, the solution that I have found before is to use this spool adapter where you simply take the wheel from where it sits and move it into the cradle here and then put this into where the wheel goes. This was created by printables user K to the stank and so far it's been pretty good for me, but there is a new upgrade that uh, I think I'm going to work on right after this video because it seems like it'll solve a lot of problems. But there is one problem with the AMS that everybody keeps bringing up, and that is the piles of poop purge waste that it creates every time you make a 3D print. Even a little 3D print like this one creates a volume of waste that is way beyond the size of the print. Now, the general solution to this is, well, just print more of them because it does these purges on every layer. So if you use more per layer, then the per part 
purge amount is a lot less. But I wanted to have a solution that didn't create any waste whatsoever, regardless of the size of print. And I discovered that there is a setting in Bamboo Slicer to take a 3D model and designate it as a flush object. So theoretically, instead of flushing to the poop chute, it would flush to this object. Now I want to take a second and talk about the complexity of this problem because if you are flushing to an object, you have to be sure that you have enough of the object to flush to, to make up the amount of the volume of waste that you're trying to remove. And the thing is, you can't just consider that for the entire volume of the object. You have to consider that on a layer by layer basis. So if you're using an object that gets small and thin as it goes up, well, on those small and thin layers, even if you turn up the infill to 80, 90, 100%, there's just not enough material being laid down there to purge it. This is where printer blocks actually answer this very well, because if you use these little two by printer blocks, there's a fairly good amount of internal volume for purging to, especially if you turn up the amount of infill and it doesn't change as it goes up. If your parts are small, you can do it with a two by, but if your parts are a lot taller, you can do it with a two by three, two by four. There are lots of printer block blocks that you can use that remain fairly constant going all the way up. Though in my experimentation, I found that sometimes I might need two or three of them to have the necessary volume and that's fine. I just get more printer blocks out of the deal. Not a bad deal. So to test this out, I created a test print that uses only three colors. It in fact doesn't use any colors in the 3D model itself. It's just a simple pawn shape. And I used the Bamboo Slicers paint tool to paint eyes and then in a different color, the mouth. This was intentional. I wanted there to be a period of overlap, some layers that had all three colors in them. And then I wanted some layers that only had two and some layers that only had one color to see how Bamboo Slicer would react to this. But my first couple of experiments did not go very well at all. The colors were almost reversed and it looked like it wasn't purging at all. Now this was because I actually turned off the purge tower in Bamboo Slicer. I thought if I have a flush object, I shouldn't need the purge tower. But apparently if you don't have the purge tower on, then it doesn't properly flush to the objects or something. I'm not quite sure what was happening, but once I turned on that purge tower, it started effectively flushing to my flush objects and the prints got better. Now I will mention that at this time, I also turned down the amount of flushing material that was, that I thought was necessary. I thought if I'm not going to be flushing it to the back of the print, then I don't need to tell it to flush as much. And it turns out that that was a mistake. I even tried adding two purge blocks at a time, but it just didn't make a difference. And in fact, on one of these prints, it seems like where the two prints overlapped on those layers where there were three colors, we went back to having the colors reversed. There just wasn't enough purge. So, okay, lesson learned. Now I should mention that Bamboo Slicer does try to make intelligent choices if you let it about how much purge to use. If you tell it what the different colors are for, well, for instance, going from black to white, you've got to purge a ton before the white is coming out clean. But going from white to black, you don't have to purge very much at all. The black kind of takes over very quickly. And it does these calculations so that provided that the colors that you've told it are accurate to the colors that you've loaded in it, it will increase or decrease the amount of flush necessary for each color. And I think that that's fantastic. That is step number one to decreasing the amount of flush. But then with the flush amounts correct and with the flush tower, the purge tower in place, I did a print. I did three printer blocks. And you can see that some of these printer blocks got more and less flush put into them. And I did the print and it turned out pretty good. 
there was a failure at the end, but it turned out all right. However, there was still a volume of purge that was going out the back of the printer too. And I thought, didn't I tell you to put this stuff in those 3D prints? There, there should have been enough, maybe theoretically. I, I don't know. Why was it doing this? And also, why does it look like on those layers that had three colors that it wasn't flushing at all to the print? I realized at this point that I hadn't done a control, that I hadn't done a print where I hadn't changed any settings and where I hadn't done any flush objects. So I did one with this object, with this print, exactly the same as the other one, but no flush objects in it. The amount of flush that it produced, the amount of purge weights that it produced out the back was significantly more, almost twice as much. So there we go. By putting flush objects in there, I was able to reduce the amount of waste. And maybe if I just add more flush objects and more flush objects, I could reduce it to zero. Well, no, not exactly. What I discovered is that while it does flush to the object, it seems to only flush one color to the object, near as I can tell. It flushes to the object and flushes to all of the objects, and then it goes to the print, but then if you have a second or third color in that layer, it doesn't continue to flush to your flush objects. In other words, what it doesn't do, but what it probably should do, is only flush to your flush objects until it reaches the volume of flush that it needs to, to purge it out of the nozzle. Stop working on the flush objects, go to your main object and do that part, then switch color again and go back to the flush objects and keep working on that one. And if you hit the end of that layer and the flush objects aren't complete, going back to the flush objects and finishing them out with whatever color you're loaded with. It's, it's not a simple problem and it's non-trivial. But if Bamboo Labs can do this and we can reduce the amount of purge waste from this to zero, putting them in useful objects instead, it would be such a win for the community, for Bamboo Labs, for everybody. And I should mention, I am taking my own medicine. Before I made this video, I did share all of this with Bamboo Labs, and I got the response back from them that, yes, they know about this, it's on their to-do list eventually. But maybe if this video goes viral, maybe it'll bump it even higher on the list. So if this is an idea that you like, like this video, leave a comment saying, yes, this would be great, and share this video with others so that Maybe Bamboo Lads will see that this is something that we all really, really want. Or maybe it's just me. Maybe I just really, really want it. I do really, really want it, though. Oh, and if you want to see more multicolor 3D prints like this, be sure to check out my other channel, Blender for 3D Printing. Whenever I throw a 3D print at the 3D printer, it's usually on the Bamboo Labs, and it's usually in multicolor. In fact, I just released a video where I made the Cactus Buddy from the limited edition McDonald's toys, and I showed how easy it is to colorize a single color 3D print for printing in multi-material. So if you want to check that out, there will be a link where you can find that. Well, as always, I want to thank you very much for watching and remind you that you are a child of God. So you're special, and you're special to me, so take care of yourself, and if you can, somebody else and go out and make something awesome. Thanks very much for watching. You know, maybe I can get an injection molding machine and use this stuff as like raw material for it. That would be pretty cool. Like 3 different dice with it. Junk dice, would you guys buy junk dice? That'd be pretty cool, I think.